services, I think it would be that very nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, this is the sort of thing that, 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 that is allowed for. That standard print and paper publishing can't allow you to do. Like, I mean, we could have just as easily had this conversation about how to interpret, how to translate Portuguese diminutives into English in print. And somebody reading that would not have just learned about Francis English, but they would have learned a little bit about English and Portuguese culture. It's good to throw information out into the wind like that. And user contributions, that's me. Okay, two days ago, changing the, uh, the translation of uh, Francis English. Now that's not a particularly good example. Here's a, a little bit better example of a, uh, of a user page. You see there's all sorts of information about the languages the person speaks. This person has basically decided to put their CV on the uh, page. And the reason why I chose this person in particular is because I know who this person is. Or at least I've seen them other, in other places on the internet, right? Uh, if I bumped into them in the street, I wouldn't know who they were. But this person visits the same sites that I visit. And I found them making edits on a page that I'm interested in, right? And I found out a little bit more about him, which allows me to actually evaluate what he's doing elsewhere as well, right? It actually, reading that, got me to think, well, okay, yeah, this guy's okay, <laughs> right? Because what he was also contributing was good, too, but it was just nice to know what his background was. Uh, so the whole question is, is that in the internet world, it's not so much that you have been vetted, it is that you have been interacting in public that allows you to establish your authority. It's not the sense that you are a celebrity, but that people, you, you have left a trail of information behind that people can examine and decide whether you're full of it or not, or whether you're worth listening to. And the important thing is, is that they can do that for themselves. It is profoundly democratic in the way that information production and distribution has not been until the advent of the internet. And this model is going to um, change our societies in very profound ways that we're just beginning now to see. Wikipedia is one of these changes. And in it, you can see the kernel of huge changes that are coming. For example, the, in England and the United States, the governments have started opening up government databases for people's use. You download inform government information on the internet, and you can play around with it. Right? It's, and the reason they're doing that is because People are expecting it to happen. And they're merely pleasing their population. So getting back to the reliability question, Eric S. Raymond, why are we talking about why am I talking about him? He is a uh, computer hacker, right? He invented the term open source, right? And that in and of itself has uh, a history to it that you can read about on Wikipedia, a clash of personalities and ideas between him and another hacker by the name of Richard Stallman, right, who prefers the, the term free software. Right. But I'm talking about Raymond here because of he basically clearly states Wikipedia's verification system or quality control system in a sentence which he calls Linus Law, Law, referring to Linus Torvalds, the creator of the, of the uh, Linux uh, operating system kernel. 
With many eyes, all bugs are shallow. Right? If you have a lot of people looking at a piece of information, even if you can change it from moment to moment, it can be changed back relatively quickly. And over time, the amount of correct information in that piece of information, whether it be a computer program or whether it be a Wikipedia article, will be greater than it than uh, otherwise would be. Right? Um, and this is actually, like I said at the beginning of the talk, been born out by empirical study. Right? Uh, Wikipedia's information content in the long term, and if you take a wide snapshot, right, and not just a deep one, it is extremely reliable. Though any one piece may not be. And that's the way the entire internet tends to work. Any one piece of information that you may find on the internet may be completely unreliable. But when you start to correlate it, its reliability goes up. Once you get into a conversation with it, its reliability goes up as long as it's agreeing with other things, as long as it's making sense of and of itself, of course. So what you get is some parts of Wikipedia are mostly reliable all the time. Those pages that are uh, heavily watched, say, like George W. Bush, right, actually is pretty informative and pretty neutral and pretty accurate. Right? Why? Because it's got millions of people watching it. Right? And then you have the opposite case, the case of uh, John Siegenthaler. Right? I don't know if you've heard of this back a few years ago. He ended up complaining to Wikipedia and threatening to sue it because of defamatory content that was published about him on Wikipedia that somebody had, as a joke, on one of their co-workers, had published an article about Siegenthaler saying that he was a suspect in the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy. Right? Now, Siegenthaler being an older man and not being quite so connected into the internet world, got very upset about this. Instead of just going and changing it back or deleting the article or whatever, he made a complaint and made a big stink about it because he does have some political pull, pull right? Um, in this case, he didn't even know that he was in Wikipedia until four months after the fact because nobody was watching this page. He's not notable, which tells you why, also, Wikipedia does watch or require a certain level of notoriety for the information. Because if it's not notable, people aren't looking at it. And if people aren't looking at it, its reliability goes way down, or its potential for reliability goes way down. So let's restate minus law for Wikipedia. Well, one person, you, the user, can't be watching all the time. You can count on there being somebody who is there while you're not. Um, and that's the foundation of Wikipedia's authority, not as a vetted instrument or institution, but as um, a persuasive institution. And it's persuasive in the sense that people use it for personal research all the time. Even though their initial reaction when, um, when asked, is it, author is it authoritative, is it reliable, is to say no. Then why are you using it? Because it's persuasive. And it's persuasive because most of the time it is correct, even though it is embedded. And uh, because it's easy to get to, right? It's easy to get that information. It's easy to correlate it with other things, right? It's incredibly useful. It is 
the encyclopedia made for and of the internet. Right? Um, I've already covered these points. The last point is important. Is that its first role is for the conservation and distribution of information. We should be clear about that. It's not about vetting the information. Although it needs to ensure reliability, it just expects that the reliability is there because of the way it's structured. Right? But it's not there to validate and certify. This is 100% accurate. And that's a role that is played by newspapers, played by publishing houses, and it's that role that we often think of when we think of authority. But that's not what authority is on the internet. Authority on the internet actually is a higher mark to hit. Right? Because you actually have to be persuasive. If you're vetted, you could be vetted for all the wrong reasons. But with Wikipedia, everything is open. You can look at it all, and you can say, this is good or this is bad. Because you've got the information in front of your eyes. Um, so, blah, 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 blah. so you have access to the users. You have access to the page's history. Again, this is just stuff that I talked about. So, to wrap up, is that you, there's no guarantee when you're using the internet. Uh, sorry, when you're using the Wikipedia. No one is going to say this is authoritative for you. No one is going to say this is reliable. Right? It's up to you to do that. All it does is give you the tools to be able to make that judgment. And in a sense, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to you to participate, and it's a challenge to become more than a passive consumer of information, but a very active consumer of information. And producer, because that's what the active part means. Right? It's a different world. And this pull towards being active is different from what it was in the past. Right? So if you're confronted with somebody who says, well, why, you know, I don't care about Wikipedia, you know, it's not authoritative, I could be reading anything on there. The answer is, well, if that's what you believe, use it, participate, make your own decision about it. Don't just stand back on the basis of what you are told. Join the conversation. And this is, in the end, again, as I've been repeating, this is what the internet says in general to people, as a medium. Right? Join the conversation. And you will find that you, by your own action, that you give authority and you give reliability to the common good, the common project. Um, thank you. Thank you.